Hey everyone, it's Lisa and today is Sunday and yesterday, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I went to a Stila event at Ulta. I had the regular rep from Stila, Sam, and then Diana also helped in doing my look and Diana is like the regional she like travels all over she said she goes to australia a lot she does espn but anyway she taught me some of her tips so i just did this look with the products that i bought and at the end i ended up adding some things so i will show more of the natural look that they did yesterday so if you're interested just keep on watching so these are the things that i have gotten i got at the stila makeover and then maybe a few other things that i want to throw in here and it will be hard for me to do the exact makeup that they did just because, you know, it's different. But I'm going to use all the products and I loved the brushes that they used at this makeover. So I ordered them off of the, that's my cats. <laughs> that was Chanel, yes. What's Chanel doing? She is coming up here. I'm doing a tutorial. So... Let's see. The first thing I'm going to put on is a new primer. You guys know how much I love the gripping primer from Cover FX. Well, they had given me a little sample of the blurring, which is kind of like a poor, yeah, blurring primer, poor minimizer. And just for the heck of it, I tried it and I really love it. Now, I don't really have excessive pores. But I do have, you know, like on my nose, sometimes I notice that I might need some help. And I've just really enjoyed using this. I think the gripping primer is going to be really good for me in the summer. Um, and I do love it. It's, it is an amazing primer. But I think, and I think you could probably use both of them. But I just want you to see this one. Okay, okay so it kind of comes out like that. And I've just been using it right here. And it really spreads like crazy. So just a little teeny bit. And maybe a little bit. T-zone, basically. And then I spread it out from there. And it doesn't feel so silicone-y. It feels a little bit... But it kind of rubs in and it just, I, I really like it. Okay. The Stila foundation that they used was in that, it kind of pumped up through a middle hole. And um, she said, you don't need full coverage and all that stuff. And so they didn't, if you, I'll put the picture in here, probably multiple places. But, and I don't really need full coverage, but I just am someone that really likes full coverage. I don't mind if you kind of shear it out or whatever. So I'm going to go in with just maybe a little bit more coverage. And I thought I would go ahead and show you this Tarte Face Tape. So and this is another color. And I'm hoping it's going to be the right one. We chose the um, Medium Golden. And it does come with a pump. So I think one pump is probably all I will need. And just make sure when you're picking this out that you look at the undertones because I didn't realize there were so many good undertones. Like, I like more of an olive. And I've learned not to put as much maybe under my eyes because I know I'm going to go back with concealer no matter what. So there's no sense in being a bunch of product underneath your eyes. Now, I have brought up here several of my new... I put this in here because I know I'm going to need it, but several of my new Sigma brushes that they sent me, and there's so many of them that I have never tried. So I thought I would try these while I'm up here today and um, maybe keep them up here for tutorials. So the first one I'm going to use is the Flat Angled Kabuki F88. It looked like something I would like. See how much covered this is? crazy but I do like this color I think I have those veins I think we all do have those veins beside our eyes that we have to cover which my hair is down most of the time I'm going to just carry this over my eyes and a little bit under just try to get in everywhere so 
So if I wanted super, 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 gosh, that's a good color match, isn't it? If I wanted super, super, super full coverage, I would just use another pump. But I think you can still see my skin through this. Wow, that is some good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna try to blend it into my eye a little bit, just so it's blended right there. I, mean, I don't know if you can see how good that pore filling primer Typically, I have to go right here and kind of push it into the pores on my nose right there, but I didn't even have to. Wow, that color is perfection. Okay. Then, okay, I think the next thing I'm going to do is powder. And I got a new product from Stila that I have, I think I saw Tati review this or something. Seems like I had like a negative feeling about this, but when she used it, I loved it. And it's in the buff powder spray. And I got the light medium, and this is kind of a matte one. I think there might've been one with some sparkle, but I wanted to use it like she used it. And so let's go. <laughs> so it's like this, and she said to spray it. Oh my gosh, look at that. Spray it into your hand. And then I'm gonna use this brush. It's super fine. Oh gosh, and silky. Boy, Chanel is just a purring. Do you think I'm talking to you, Chanel? Huh? So, boy, that is so pretty. Okay. <laughs> if you guys could see what I have this set up on to do this. Okay, so here we go. I had to go find this, but this is the Park Avenue Princess by Tarte, and this is the contour palette that she used. So my favorite brush lately to use for this has been this brush. I mean, you can use this brush for so many things. It's the Sephora Pro Featherweight Blending. I have a cat hair, imagine that. And number 93, goodness, right here. I feel it right in my Sarah Hap. Anyway, so I'm gonna go in with, I think she did a, a um, little blend of this color and this color. It was the nude and the, woo. Okay, I need to be careful. I'll blend that out. I just didn't want to put any more right there. Yeah. And she said she was going up a little bit higher than usual. And that's something I've been trying to do. Okay. And then I'm going to go into its carrot. No, it's princess cut and angle are the two colors. So I'm going to do that jawline. I need to get better at mixing colors. I think it's because I'm a Virgo. <laughs> I don't know how much I believe in that, but it is true. I don't, I'm a kind of stay in the lines kind of girl. And I, you know, once somebody shows me something, I'll do it, but. Okay, I think I'm gonna bring it a little bit more right here. Okay, wow, I love it. The blush she used was this, and it's a convertible color dual lip and cheek cream in Peony. Peony, Peony, however you would like to say it. I had somebody correct me last time. <laughs> I just don't even think about stuff like that. I just know everybody says some things differently. But anyway, here's the color. And so I thought I would, most of the time when I do a cream color, I like a duo fiber brush. So today I'm gonna to use this F80 Air Flat Kabuki from Sigma. And we're gonna go in and we're just gonna, ooh, that's pretty. I'm kinda gonna go right where that contour is. And I'm just gonna kinda of place it and then she took her hands like this and kind of was, I can't do it to myself, but she was rubbing it in. Then she was taking it like right under 
the cheekbones like that, like blending it and then placing it like that. I don't know if I can do it with my, and then really getting up under the cheekbones like that. Isn't that pretty? Let's put this on the lips just to see. Oh, I like that. But I really like that. Okay, love that. Okay, now, let's see. There's a little bit of darkness under my eyes, but I'm going to wait because she did that after we did my eyes. And I'm not going to use any... Um, any of the, what brush did I use for powder? I'm gonna use this one. I'm just gonna powder over my eyes and then let's do my eyebrows because that was a big part of my look. And it, I bought two products. I bought two of the Stay All Day Waterproof Brow Colors. And I told her I kinda, I don't always want this look, but sometimes, you know, when I'm copying a look, someone has much darker brows than I do. And I actually do have somewhat dark brows. I love them when they're like wet, like right after I've washed my face. I love that color. So I explained to her that I didn't want big, bushy, dark brows. I just wanted within my brows for them to be dark. And so um, they suggested that I use dark and medium. So I think I'm going to go in with medium first and then we'll do some dark in there. And these suckers stay on all day. If you have a problem with your eyebrows coming off. I had to like take these off. So I'm going to see how my brow hair, I have it up there, but it's kind of sparse. So I'm going to just go ahead and fill. Matter of fact, let me brush these suckers out first. Like this. It's kind of like I want them dark and very precise, but not overpowering. So I'm going to kind of take advantage of every hair that I have here and my arch like that. And then in the front, I'm going to do white people always say hair like strokes. Okay, and then let me, I'm glad I did this one first because this is probably what you would use most of the time. It's probably my color. And I will say you barely have to touch your brow to get the intensity. Okay, that already looks dark, doesn't it? Ah! Okay. And I've been bringing them in. I mean, I don't know. Should I be bringing them in maybe a little bit further? I do have a few little hairs, like right here. So I will bring them in maybe a little bit further. Like that. Okay. Maybe soften that a little bit. Okay, now, this is scary. Now let me go in with the, oh, let me swatch for you the color. So that is the color of this one. And this is medium. And so dark is, is a cool tone brown. Okay, so I'm gonna be very, very, I'm just gonna kinda go in and maybe, you know, you always want the tail of your brow to maybe be a little bit darker. And maybe do a few little light, oops, strokes right there. I feel like Pixie Woo. I feel like I should do something. Let me see if that brow brush will take a little bit of this pigment up there. Yeah. You guys get the idea. I'm not going to do it perfect this first time, but you get the color idea. 
Okay, I think I have gotten a good idea that you put your, if you put your arm down, and steady your arm, and then just flick up like that. Yes, much better. Okay, I, I feel like I got a pyramid going on here. Okay, so a little bit better. <laughs> I'm just scared. Okay, I want to go in a little bit right here. This medium. Okay, that's better. Anyway, don't let me deter, deter you from trying because it's really cool. Okay. Wow. Do I have angry brows? Okay. We're going to leave that there for now. And now we're going to go into this palette, which is the Soul palette. And you guys know these are just good palettes. I had some, and I think I, in one of my get rid of everything tangents got rid of these and I've kind of regretted it because I've since then I've seen like Monica Blunder and a lot of people use these but it's this just very neutral palette and she used just the cream color and just this dark color now I might use a few more colors just because just for fun so I'm going to use this brush to do color all over it is the diffused crease E38, but I'm going to go in this lightest color first and just lay down some color all over like that. And I, just for the heck of it, had showed her that same picture that I showed you guys on Friday. And um, it's funny, um, Ariel Snyder knew the girl in that picture and sent me her Instagram. So I will put that down below, but it was so neat. So I know exactly what she was wearing in that pic. And you will probably see some of those things in my Friday video, my Friday haul, because you know me, I had to go right out and get a lot of them. So I, just because I'm kind of scared, I hate to start with that darkest color. I'm gonna start with this color right here in the middle and kind of do a diffused crease with this brush and just kind of map out and go in here and map out where I want my crease. And you know, when you're watching a video, you your crease may not be where somebody else's is and then my even my two eyes differ a little bit. So you have to just, you know, go along that bone. And um, like I, tend to not want to go deep in my crease. I want to go on that bone to kind of recede that a little bit just because my eyes are deep set. So I'm gonna go like that. This is smooth, this eyeshadow. And this brush feels good. I forgot about poor Sigma brushes. It's kind of like Sigma and MAC. Is this light too much? Hold on, let me close my blinds. Okay, let's see if that light's better. Let's maybe pull you in a little bit more. Okay. And um, but anyway, Sigma and MAC, you know, well, MAC first, and then, you know, Sigma, and then everything else, Morphe kind of takes over with the advertising and everything. And um, so, okay, I'm going to leave that like that. Now I'm going to go in with more of a pointed brush. And I used this one yesterday, and this is... A really cool brush it is the Sigma pointed crease e48 and look at this thing and it's see how sorry my eyeshadow from yesterday is coming out but it's stiff but yet it still has a soft pointed crease and I yesterday I did it I think what yesterday it was the day before when did I use this must have been the day before yeah it was it was okay um, I'm going to dip it just a little bit into this darkest brown, and I'm going to knock a little bit off just because I'm scared, and I'm going to go into that crease, and see how this brush just, wow, it just lays it in there and 
diffuses it into the next color. It is pretty amazing. I think it's how it's, see how it's angled like that? So I'm going to put it there and then kind of work it up like that. There's a little bit more focus in that look right here. And then I'll kind of pull it out some like that. Okay, I'm having to look at these pictures again to see if she had what they had on my... Okay, I think there was more dark on my lid. I think she might have gone over my lid a little bit with the dark. So I'm going to grab just this medium sweeper, E54, and I'm going to do a little bit in this and a little bit in that and then go over my lid. Yeah. That just makes it where it's not quite as dark, but it's not, you know, bright white either. Ooh, that's perfect. Okay, so a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and this is very soft. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. And then I put a brush in here today that was interesting. Medium angled shading. That's not it. It was different. Okay, here it is. It is the, let's see, per Edge Precision P87. So I, I assume it's just like to get that edge. So I'm going to go into this lightest color and maybe even a dot of that color and just do this edge like that. And see, because it's like the, um, kind of like a duo fiber, it's going to be a little bit lighter. Okay, I feel like I might need a little bit of the dark put back in this. I noticed these colors really made my eyes really blue yesterday. Okay, so I'm not going to mess with the bottom lash line until afterwards. Okay, so, um, okay, this is something else they used, and it is the Vivid Smoky Quartz Smudge Stick Waterproof Eyeliner, which is a true, just dark, dark brown, and um, so that's the one I chose. Okay, and then I'm going to take a Q-tip, one of these pointed Q-tips, and kind of blend it out. And then go in again. You may have to go back and forth a few times until you get the intensity that you want. I know with gel, regular gel liners, I like to blend it out and then go back in at my lash line. So that's probably what I'm going to do here because you can see some has been lost. Oops. Like that. That one did better. And then you can always just add a little bit more right here at the end. And that'll help pick your eye up. It doesn't have to be a wing. Gosh, this one did better. I think I might have. Probably because it had the um, little bit of liner from this one on, maybe.
Okay, I think that's pretty even. And then for the lower liner, what she told me to do is instead of doing a line underneath or a tight line to kind of go into the lashes and do some dots, just some like little dashes. And then I'm just gonna take my finger and smudge it out like that. And that gives you a little bit of shading underneath. Those colors again, I'm gonna use this, which is the E54 Medium Sweeper. And I'm gonna go underneath with this lightest shade first. And I don't think I'm gonna do the darkest shade. I think I'm just gonna leave it there. Let's do the corrector, cause that's bugging me, my under eyes. So for concealer, she just used this and um you know what let me let me spray my face real quick because i feel like i'm so powdery before i put on any cream products i want to spray my face i'll be right back so this is her favorite um corrector it's the tarte cc colored clay under eye corrector so we will give it a try and see how it goes because she just purely used this as my concealer. I think I'm going to go in probably with something else. But, so it's like that and then warm it up. It's very, very, very emollient. I'm going to tap some off. She said that it was much better than the Bobbi Brown for not creasing. So, oh yeah, wow. That is good, isn't it? That is barely any. That is really pretty. Look how good it is for that little darkness right there. That is really, really good. Okay, I feel like I should have done this before. She did it after, so I'm trying to do it just like they did yesterday. And I'm gonna use maybe just a little bit around my nose. Like that. Okay, we might come back to that, but wow, that really did good underneath my eyes. I did bring my Jouer concealer up here, but it is so high coverage. I'm scared to death that if I, okay, I'm gonna mess it up, but I just wanted to, we might have to go back in, but let's just see. I wanted to go in with like, this thing looked good. Tapered Kabuki F86. Okay, I'm gonna kind of, Okay, I might not need it. That is some good stuff, this Jouer concealer. I think it's just like Shape Tape, but better. I think it's a little prettier. Yeah, that is good. Okay. I didn't even need this. I'll use it just to pat out, because I knew that would be a good shape to get in there. Wow. Okay, this is just a good natural look. This isn't really like bombshell to me. Okay, now, can, I mean, mascara. I didn't get the Stila mascara. I can't even remember what kind they use because I know I'm loving this so much. It's the Hourglass Caution. This is a must have, I'm telling you. That is that brush, and this one's pretty great too. I'm gonna save this out in case I want to put some more stuff on. Okay, the Hourglass. Caution Mascara. Prepare to be amazed. I have not curled my lashes or anything, but we're just gonna, here, let me flip this over to magnifying. Okay, I'm not good with the magnifying side. You know what, let's do this. When you, for every 50 you spent on Stila, you got a gift. I think it was something like that, it was a $50 minimum. But I got this mirror. I love it. And I told her that would be good for my videos. And I need to hold up a mirror. Okay, perfect. Do you guys see this? It is so pretty. See how it gets like right down to my lashes.
And then I'm going to show you what she did after I put on my false lashes. The lashes, I'm going to use the exact ones from yesterday that she cut. And these are the, I think, 811s. They're the ones that that girl had on in the picture. The makeup artist said that she thinks those were the ones. So, um, I just bought them when I was there at um, Ulta that day. And I bought some glue, too. It was buy one, get one half. And I thought I brought it up here. I found it. She likes this brush-on adhesive with vitamins. And the reason is, she says it's good when you want to, like if a piece is sticking up or whatever. She does makeup for ESPN and stuff and a lot of, like, you know, t television makeup. And so, she said this is better. And I wanted her to be able to use what she was used to using. So, this band is kind of a thick one, so you might need to do that to kind of work it. Easers. And... Right there. Right into the lash line. And this part right here is the most important. The inside is the most important to set down in the best place. The outside you can cheat a little bit and carry it up a little bit above your lashes like that. And I feel that's secure. So I'm going to do the next one. down kind of I just usually try to set it down where it's kind of naturally hitting that way you're not stressing this part to pop up like that and then something that she did is she had a brush this is the uh, waterline liner e17 but she had a brush I've got one from Mac I just didn't want to have to take everything out and find it but a little brush that is kind of um, either fanned out or straight like this that you can take your mascara and she did it like this where she takes her mascara and then she kind of um, blends in the lashes and the falsies together but I thought even if you're not wearing lashes that's a good way to get the tips of your lashes because if you're like me sometimes the mascara won't get all the way to the ends so this is a good way just to add mascara like that. I love, I think you can just learn something from everybody when it comes, especially when it comes to makeup. So you know that's cooking me out that that's on there, so I'm going to wipe it on this. Show you something else I like doing with these little flat brushes too. You can take like, um, like take like this darkest color that we used and like barely dot into it and go up right to the lash line, set it down and pull down like that. And it gives you like a faded blended out line. I'm going to actually take this and kind of color in that space and like that. Kinda, not really a wing, but just flick it out. Like that. So here is the final look. It's very, um, I think it's kind of glam, but in a more natural way. And I am going to, I love the blush. I think the blush just adds that juiciness to your cheeks. I'm going to just go in with a little bit of highlight on this tapered highlighter F35. So let's go in with, um, Halo and Enhance. I thought it was going to say Hala. I'm so jaded to all these crazy names. So Halo and Enhance and go right here. They're not really even shimmery, but 
it'll just add that little bit. You don't always need shimmer to highlight. And then I'm going to use those two right here. And that just carves out the cheekbones a little bit more. And then maybe this right in the center, like that. And looks like I'm a little shiny, like right here. So I'm going to use a little bit of this spray powder. And I'm going to just, it's so neat. It would be good for travel too. That way your powder doesn't go everywhere. And grab this in my brush and knock that out. So, I hope you guys learned some of my little tips and tell me what you think about the darker brows and everything else. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And anything else? Anything else? Oh, the lips. Okay, I do have on that blush. Let's do this, um, this little lip that they gave me. This color is Patina. I have to be pretty precise because it is a liquid lip. So... Work on your edges first, like you're doing a lip liner. And then fill in. Okay, boy. That packs a punch, doesn't it? Okay, so that's a little something different, because yesterday I went with more of a peachy look. Okay, tell me down below what your favorite product is. I think they all work well together. I think if I wanted to go in, maybe let's go in a little bit deeper with that. Let's do another eyeshadow. What about um, this one right here that's kind of like a purpley brown? This brush is awesome. Okay, so that just takes it. to more of a, you know, it's getting to be more me and more me. <laughs> I'm going to ruin my natural Stila look. But you know how it is. You can just add more and more. And then just because we're going to take this color right here, we're going to put some on the lid. we go. I think that's cool. I love doing stuff like that. Okay, so I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you real soon. Bye-bye.